Endor, Season 1, Episode 10. Let's do it. Let's do it. The old guy died by a stroke. Lost, yeah. Basically, he was overworked. And then they wheel his body through the workplace. Is this, they're trying to incite a riot? That's what I thought. That's a good point. On one hand, it's intimidating because, like, here's one of your friends and it's dead now. But on the other hand, it could spur a riot. That's right. But maybe they had no other choice. The the geometry of the prison is just there's only one way out and it's through the workplace. So Hmm. they had no choice. Also, maybe it's just complacency of the Empire. Mm -hmm. They, like, don't care that they're potentially inciting a riot. They're just like, whatever, the prisoners will do what we want because we're at the Empire. That's right. And if they don't, we'll shoot them. Or, like, yep. hit the button for the floor. Yep. Hmm. A rebellion would be shocking. That's right. So, it's just the arrogance of the Empire. I buy it. They do that left and right. Yeah. So, this is Commander Miro looking at the screen after they did this operation where they fouled a ship. Um, and then pretended to act like they were just going to look for it. And they were trying to take down a person. His name is Krieger. Krieger. And this yep, they're baiting him out. Which we've never met Krieger, and we don't even know really know what this situation is, but we know um, it has intelligence significance. Yeah, is I think right? Krieger is a, is a rebellion cell, very much like Saul Guerra. Mm-hmm. And so he's like a peer of Saul. And so, yeah, we don't, we haven't seen him, but we did see a hologram of what he looks like. And they, the Empire set a trap for him. Mm-hmm. That's right. I wonder, can we decipher anything on this board here? Like, what is this arrow? It's hard to read any labels. Second arrow. Uh, and then we yeah. got the, these, the double ball, the handcuffs. Yep. The handcuffs. Yeah, I saw handcuffs too. Oh, oh, the handcuffs. And then here are the two ships with the trailing ship. That must be these. Ah, so the lead ship is probably tugboating the broken ship. The broken ship's the foul one. And then oh. there's the two handcuffs is some type of like, I don't know, reconnaissance range. So there's, oh no, that's a space station or something. Or maybe it's a dual planet system and they're getting pulled into one of the planets. Oh, I see. So the up here, this ship is the tugboat this ship is the fouled ship and on this larger diagram they're together they're going to this double planet maybe yeah Mm. the handcuffed planet okay we're putting it together and then maybe this is the star system they're in so it looks like a star maybe that's the death star could be no why would it be nearby is it nearby (laughs) just up on the screen all the time (laughs) all the time (laughs) (laughs) and i think this is just another angle of the same shot Mm-hmm. it's cool to know that sometimes people stand inside there yeah and i like how they put details into the like the background um i don't know maps and diagrams and stuff like it actually looks like it's representing what they describe it's cool it looks like they're having an actual meeting and we just happen to be a fly on the wall that's right yeah a fly on the soundproofed wall which wouldn't happen in the empire no flies no flies. Yeah, absolutely no flies. Except maybe on the outer rim where stuff gets dirty and nasty. We don't, we don't care about them. We don't care about them. <laughs> Determination. Yeah, so in this section, they're, they're talking about the prisoner transfer between four to two, but mm-hmm. floors four to two. But why would that ever happen? Because the prisoner that was on four, like, they knew that they were on four and then they're dropped into two. Like they're going to tell people in two, like uh, this was not legit. I was supposed to be free. That's right. And he's, he's doubly the person, the prisoner who was transferred from four to two is now doubly motivated to tell everyone because now he knows he's not going to get free. So he's nothing to lose. Yeah. Yeah. So the empire really screwed up with that transfer from four to two. I mean, I guess they could transfer between different facilities like there are multiple of these of these manufacturing facilities you could transfer them like freed prisoners to a centralized freed prisoner um factory 
But even then, like you would just have a nightmare trying to keep that place under control because all the people there would know that there's no actual freedom. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, means just kill them. What are you doing? Either, yeah, just kill them. Just kill them. Or, or it's intentional and they're trying to create a prison riot for some unknown reason we don't understand yet. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, I could imagine it in that they're trying to break the will of the prisoners. But if you give them no hope, then you get a rebellion. That's right. Maybe they push too hard without realizing what it meant. And then the only hope is escape or death. Yeah. Yeah. Empire Space. fucking it up. Screwing it up. Yeah. Wasn't well, this part of it? Like tyranny is good at the beginning because stuff can get done. But then it just goes way too far and then it oppresses everybody. Yep. Yep. The termination. Sinta. Sinta. She's the best. Mm-hmm. She is the most determined operative I think I've seen in the show. Like singular focus. Laser focused. Yeah, she has fun on the side, but that's only after that's the rebellion right. is taking uh, right. all it needs. Will she know how to? Will she know how to party and live after the rebellion is over, or is she just going to be lose all purpose once the rebellion wins? Once the rebellion wins, they become the new power, and then she rebels against them. Oh, she's in constant rebellion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here she went from the cool operation on uh, Aldani to now doing like a pretty boring stakeout of Marva's house, but she's mm-hmm. like laser focused and completely in the zone at all times. She had a part-time job though. Oh yeah. She was a barista mm-hmm. as a part of the surveillance, as a part of the surveillance, but you know, it's a job. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, it's a job. Yeah. This is the thug. As Mon Mothma described him, his name... Davo Skulden. Yeah, Davo Skulden. And he is some kind of banker, businessman, shady guy who has access to financial shenanigans that Mon Mothma can use to launder her money from the Empire. Mm -hmm. And his offer was he will launder the money for the rebellion for Mon Mothma uh, in exchange for his son meeting her daughter. And at first yeah. you think Mon Mothma is going to say no, but then she's like, later, she's like, oh. I gotta, I gotta, because she needs it for the rebellion. That's right. I'm still convinced the daughter knows more than she's saying. She's given surprisingly, like, astute looks in in scenes where I'm like, hmm, does she know? Does she know? Well, why are you nervous? Nothing's going on here. Unless you know. Unless you know. Or also, like, Mon Mothma, yeah. you got a teenage girl. All you got to do is approve of the boy. And that teenage girl's out. She don't want that guy. Wait, say that again? Moth- Mon Mothma has a rebellious teenage daughter. Mm-hmm. All she has to do is approve of the, the male suitor, the 15-year-old, the son of this guy. And then she approves of him. And then the daughter's like, oh, never mind. I don't want this. I don't want this. Yeah, I'm, gonna re- I'm rebelling she, against whatever you say. <laughs> she needs to do like a mother-daughter day. I did the same thing. This old tradition too. And then the, the daughter's like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> I think it could be that the 15-year-old son of Davo actually may be a good guy. We will oh. see. Maybe oh. there's a twist. Turns out oh. he's Han Solo. Or maybe Davo is playing the bad guy. Maybe Davo is playing the bad guy and he's actually a good guy. I can't tell. I can't tell who's acting and who's not. So much political subterfuge. Yeah, I wonder, is is the banker, the, the friend, Manmathma's friend on the left there, is he yeah. actually a bad actor? Like like a bad agent? Like he connected oh. he connected Mon Mathma to this, but maybe he could have done something else. Yeah, so this the banker, what's his name? His name is Tay. I don't know. Yeah, That's I don't fine. Remember. find him in our glossary here Tay Colma Tay Colma and Davos Skaldun Skaldun not sure um, so we're not sure Tay is Tay good possibly I mean he may be on the side of his 
pocket. Like, yeah, he's not happy with the Empire, but he still may be out for himself. That's right. And then this guy, Davo, is portraying himself as this thug businessman. That could be a front while he does shady rebel stuff on the side. Or maybe everyone is as they seem. I don't know. It's a good point because he doesn't know that Mon Mothma is running rebellion stuff. That's right. He's just trying to get political climbing. But maybe that political climbing is for the rebellion. Right. And if that's if he's expected to be a thug, then that gives him some freedom. That's right. Because it's in line with his thug character to do that's kind right. of shady shit. That's right. Mm. Still don't know how it's all going to fit together. These two should get married. Which two? Oh, sorry. Mon Mothma and Skulvin. Hmm. I always thought that Mon Mothma should marry Tay. They seem to have a little little spark. That's true. But we'll see. The husband and Mon Mothma don't seem to get along, but yeah, it was probably arranged. Oh, this is the prison breakout. And mm. Cassian is like using this tool piece to like unhinge the to pipe. Pry, to pry to the pipe pry open. the bar and break yeah. it. Yeah. And I guess the they knew if the it's going to like spray water. They knew if the water sprayed everywhere, it would like short out the floors. They kind of knew that. It's a good it's a good guess, right? It's a Just good guess. Water yeah. and electrics. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. How he, how did they know the prisoners know that that like what pipe is which and which wire is which i guess Good point i guess if you unless they're able place, to unless go. they're able to trace the hose to the sink to the toilet that could be any hose this could have been a gas hose true may i mean i guess if you live in a place long enough and you're bored enough and if you know like a lot of people in the star wars universe know how to repair things and do plumbing and different things like people might be able to put more together than is obvious when they flush or when they run the sink, they can put their hand on it. If they feel the current, then that's the water line. Uh, I see. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Very clean water. I guess you could also hear it maybe if it's that's true. If it's a hollow pipe. Yeah. I guess you could touch sure. it as well. And if it's cold, that's what you're saying, cold to the touch versus the, the exactly. wires are have a different feel to them. Yes, yes. Mm. I buy it. I buy it. Especially if there's a little like, turbulent flow, you can feel the... That's right. The velo vibrations. That's right. Very difficult he does this all by himself. Yeah. So that starts. That's step one. Mm -hmm. After they so he does it by himself, like yeah. he's solo. Yeah, this got me some Han Solo vibe. He's yeah. got that Han Solo pose. That's right. As he's killing somebody. I'm going to, when I say hello to people, I'm going to do that pose. <laughs> I mean, without a, like, without a, like a laser or whatever, but like, a, yeah. That's yeah. So this is after they escape. So I guess they haven't escaped yet, but they've actually made it to the top of the prison. And this is, actually, I don't know if he's the commander of the prison or if he's just the guy in front of the command console. Like the admin -y guy, right? The admin -y guy, yeah. So I don't think he's actually in charge, but he's effectively in charge now because the prisoners made it it's just going wild yeah 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 and kino so kino's here with his blaster and he gets real close i mean i get it because you want to intimidate a dude but like at that distance that blaster could be slapped away now you're hand-to-hand -hand combat behind a barrier mm, keep it distance yeah your range is your advantage keep it mm-hmm mm -hmm. then they gain control of the control room and then it's time for a speech. Actually, he he fumbles at first. Kino mm -hmm. fumbles at first. But then he lays a huge speech down with a tagline ready for tag people line. to chant. What yeah. was the tagline? Oh, gosh. One way out? I think it was one way out. One way, or was it stone and sky? I think, I think it's the name of the um, <laughs> the actual episode. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, one, yeah, way, one, out, yeah. one, one way out. One way out. Oh, Stone and Sky is the daughters of Ferrix. Yeah. So <laughs> he just, I mean, oh, on the fly, epic speech with a tagline that people can chant as they're rioting. Nailed it. 
I guess there's nothing more to say. You just precious. So here is a clean shot of the 2D map of the prison. I was a little confused because it's a 3D prison, but a 2D map. Yeah. So is this like a top down projection? So like each dot could be on a separate floors, but all we see is top down. That's right. Maybe, or is it a single floor? In which case you have, you don't have information about, I guess the multitude of other floors. Oh, I see. What Maybe this is like a, like a highlight. Like they've, they've gone to floor 52 or what? They've gone to floor five. Maybe. Yeah. Cause like it, that's where shit's going down. It would be hard to keep situational awareness though with one 2d map. If you have hundreds of floors. Yeah. Yeah. So indica- maybe they don't they didn't plan for that because they only really they only expected to need to look at one floor at a time. That's true. Yeah. Engineering flaw. That's true. I guess there's no indicator that there's a floor. I see T A. I see Sigma Kappa. C- C- Kai. Okay, C- yeah. Kappa. Kappa Kappa Theta. Kappa Theta. Sure. Yeah, it's Star Wars uh letters. And I guess the yellow dots are the prisoners, are prisoners on one floor, if it's indeed one floor. Cool septagon building, though. How often do you get a seven-sided building? That's right. That's neat. Is it really septagon? Let's see. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to go. I remember seven is the one that looks weird. Hexagon looks okay. Octagon looks like a step sign. And then Septagon is like, what? Okay, so then we got one here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Zoom out a little bit more. Seven, I think you're right. Six, seven. Ah, there it is. What am I doing? (laughs) Really superior. Weird, right? Here we go. Se- yeah. seven sided buildings are it's it's the shape is not a hexagon not an octagon mm-hmm. okay it's seven we are yeah. we are it's uncommon to see it hmm. building that would have been i wonder a, if it's like the really strong structure for having it being in this underwater stuff you don't want angles to be too large small why not build a just a cir- circular building and there's no angles to worry about Can we go to the next picture? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you got me stumped. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. It's maybe it's just arrogance, you know? They're like, whatever, we'll make it seven because we have the money. Seven. Yep. <laughs> this was interesting. I thought this was very high that they're jumping from to mm-hmm. escape the prison. And I was like, how high can you jump into water without getting injured? And I don't actually know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think if you I know jump that it's like I know that it's like that the the way you enter the water is very significant. Mm-hmm. Like you either like pencil or you arm straight up. But if you have your arms out at all, it's gonna be like a slap super hard. Right. So they need to land in the water without breaking anything or getting injured right. so they can swim for the next ten miles to land or whatever it is. Or even just having the wind knocked out of you. Wind knocked out of you and you're in water, like what are you gonna do? Like That's right. And they also they all sort of just pile off off the platform into the water and they're going to start landing on top of one another. A lot of people are going to get knocked out, break bones, die. It's like the Titanic. That's right. Yeah. Although maybe not as cold because it's like daytime. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we have, we have no idea what those waters like. It could be very cold water. Mm-hmm. It could also be very high salinity and they, they may be very buoyant in it. That's right. I don't know. So the salinity matters. The temperature of the water matters. I guess, predators in the water matter i don't know at the end kino doesn't even jump who knows you might yeah. have been okay might have been okay yeah what if there's like a strong current and everyone just gets pulled right to the beach <laughs> that would be cool or that we did see that those those um suction devices pulling water in <gasps> for the hydroelectric maybe they get sucked into that and nobody escapes but those are off now those are off oh, now because right. they shut down the power right that's yeah right. yeah that's right that's right. Which means, I guess that means those holes are closed. They're not still open. Yeah, they're just flooded. They're just flooded. Okay. Cool. 
Oh, and this is the Decepticon. seven-sided gone again. Weird, right? Very weird. Oh, interesting. So, so you see there, there's there's a a group of people leaving out from one, two, mm -hmm. three different legions. Yeah. Interesting. Does it's asymmetric? I mean, it has to be. There's no way to make it symmetric. Or I mean, they could have seven sides and seven people, like seven groups escaping. Oh, that's but true. They could have up to seven. Yeah. It's just. It's just. It looks. That's so weird. It like weird. why? Why is it shaped like this? Maybe we'll, maybe there's something to do with sevens in Star Wars. You know, mm. I mean, we use we use ten because we have ten fingers. Fingies. So, ah, well, maybe the original creators of the station had seven fingers. Mm -hmm. Which means the Empire didn't make it because the Empire is like exclusively human. So it would right. be a seven fingered maybe it's seven on each hand species maybe could, could be so that's natural to them or maybe it's like it's like a three fingered three fingered plus a prehensile tail seven seven okay that could be three maybe feet. no fingers and seven prehensile tails seven i buy it sure 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 This guy's name is. I got it. Lori. Lonnie. Lonnie. Lonnie Young. Lonnie Young. And he is an ISB agent. And he's mm -hmm. also a spy, double agent for uh, Luthen. So he's feeding him information about the fouled ship operation. He's also feeding him information about. It was something about a power station that Saw Guerrero was gonna hit. Uh, it is called the Power Station at Spell House. Hmm. He also feeds in that information. Hmm. But then he, the reason he's actually there was to tell Luthen he wants to quit because he's got a daughter. Yeah. But now he's stuck. You can't quit. You can't even quit from ISB. No, you can't. Cool meeting place. Yeah, cool meeting place. Cool, here's, cool here's... underground, above ground, mm -hmm. darkness, no ledges, no railings. Yeah. I mean, it looks very imperial, but it also has a mixture of some republic elements. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, in imperial design, there are no railings and ridiculous falls. But yep. things are clean. Here, things are a little bit dirty, but we still we have the falls and the vertical spaces. Mm. Very cool. Uh, Lori is in the elevator, and the other angle is Luthen mm -hmm. on the precarious walkway. Yep, with this super cool cape. Should I start wearing a cape? You should always wear a cape. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Always wear a cape. Yeah, because uh, you're Superman. Yeah. Why aren't capes a thing anymore? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. This guy, so so Lonnie, Lonnie, right? Yeah. He's wearing an ear pierce here, an ear right. piece here, and he got it in the elevator. But like, why? why? Because just in a few minutes, he's going to see Luthen face to face. Mm -hmm. It seemed like unnecessarily, unnecessary wireless communication that could just get picked up. There's also the fact that maybe if it's no, no, there's really no, if they're face to face like this. The most secure way to talk is through sound. Just directly. Just right? directly. No transmissions. Because right. if somebody is there trying to listen, they'd have to have like a parabolic microphone or something, and it'd be very difficult. Whereas if mm -hmm. you're broadcasting signals over some of your piece, it may be easier to pick up. Yeah, just spherically, just it's being sent everywhere. Yeah. Unless the two earpieces like find each other and then like... Point to point laser. Do a point to point laser. It's neat. Yeah. Maybe. It'd be neat. Yeah. I don't know why he yeah. had an earpiece. Or maybe maybe it's something like if if Lonnie says something that Luthen doesn't like, then Luthen could just not open the door for him. Just dump him. Dump him. Just drop him all the way. Kill him. What does that have to do with the earpiece, though? 
So we're gonna we're gonna communicate by earpiece. If you say something I don't like, I'm not gonna push the button that opens the door, or I'm gonna push a different button that just drops the elevator to the ground and kills you. Oh, oh I see. So maybe it's it's Luthen is protecting himself, but also he has the ability to kill Lonnie on command right. without putting himself in danger. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm glad I'm not the worker who has to work on this this panel right here. Yeah, you know, like you got to lean over, like yeah. one foot it, hold on to the pillar. <laughs> yeah. There's just, not even anything to hook into. What would you not, use for your safety harness? Maybe you just wrap around the pillar. You got to like swing a rope around and catch it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Right. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> or this one is even worse. This panel. Got to get like a ladder situation going on. No way. I wonder if logging people would know what to do here. That's a good point. Well, logging people, if they were to build a thing, they would put platforms where convenient. So if you worked That's on true. them. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what do we have? This one. We have the end of the episode. Yeah. So here is Cassian and well, one of the prisoners. They escape, they swim from the ocean all the way to, to the beach, then they climb mm. and up to this this mesa, I guess. Yeah. And they're making a run for it. Must be exhausted. Mm -hmm. But how yeah. are they gonna get off the planet? Like you're still stuck planet side. Yeah. Space travel really changes the nature of That's right. Escape. <laughs> I mean, they must be exhausted too. They had to do the escape, battle the escape jump off swim for 10 miles or whatever it is get to the beach now you're wet mm -hmm. now you've got to run over land hope it's warm <laughs> yeah otherwise you're cold. gonna shiver and lose energy yeah. and it's been a long time since you've had any nutrient paste that's right you don't have water you don't have, don't have water food and being wet in the air is very dangerous you can't be out there for very long it pulls no. heat right off of you yeah through conduction and evaporation Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> they should hunker down somewhere find a cave but where are you thinking to find food <sighs> well um, Cassian could eat the other dude well that's if one of them dies but at that point they're probably both screwed yeah hmm. see you next time for Andor yeah. season 1 episode 11